Yo, what's up, my dudes? It's your boy, Mumble Mouth. And before we get into the video, I just want to let you guys know I'm doing a giveaway uh, when I hit a thousand subs. So uh, if you want to just hit that sub button and go comment on that video, that would be sweet. It, the video should be like over somewhere over here. I'll, if I figure out how to actually do it, I'll put it in. But if I don't, this is going to look so stupid. But it'll be somewhere. Or if it's not, it'll be at the end card. Or just find it. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You tired of uh, teammates always getting in your way? Well, I'm here to tell you that maybe it's not all your teammates' fault. Maybe you can improve yourself to actually get better at rotations. So, let's jump into this video. But, Mumble Mouth, haven't this, uh, hasn't this video already, haven't this video already been made? Yeah, you are right. This video has been made quite a bit, but not to the detail that I want to explain it into. And it's always better to get the best or the most perspectives from each person possible. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, uh, this is going to be specifically to 2v2 rotations. Because 3v3 is a whole different ball game, which I'm not even going to touch right now. Because it's a whole different game completely. If you want to see that video, or me make that video, uh, make sure to get this video to 50 likes, and I'll do it. I'll do it at 50 likes. Alright. So, uh, let's, let's actually now jump into it. So, I like to think of Rocket League as, um, kind of split down the middle. I, I like to think of it as like a badminton or like a tennis game. A 2v2 badminton or a tennis game. Where one person's on the left side, and one person's on the right side. So basically, you want to always be open for your teammates' play, right? You never want to be in with them or double committing with them. You can be behind them, but it's not always the best. It's kind of hard to explain. If you haven't seen Sunless Khan's video, it was like two years ago where he talks about the sectors, I would greatly uh, recommend that video to you. It still holds up even two years after uh, him uploading that video. It still holds up. I'm just going to go into more detail about the situations. But if, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the badminton thing, look at Sunless Khan's video. Uh, shout out to Sunless Khan. He did, it's still, yeah, it still is relevant to date. Uh, but the times have kind of changed with uh, adapting to uh, play styles and everything like that, which I'm going to go more into detail. So I don't want to talk too much about the sectors and everything like that. But basically, you want to give your teammate space. That's, that's the gist of it. You wanna, you don't wanna ever double commit, especially in the opponent's corners. If you double commit in the opponent's corners, that's, don't do that ever. It's, oh, God. Okay, so now let's actually talk about the meat, the meat of the video, uh, which is actually how to do rotations in certain scenarios. Yes, there is different rotations for scenarios. For example, uh, for kickoffs, right? Uh, if you win the kickoff, if you win it, you earned the corner or the side boost you've earned it completely but that being said if you have uh lost the kickoff uh it goes right to your opponent's uh teammate or it goes right to him and then your teammate is forced into a bad 50 you have to rotate back so yeah uh, it's easy kickoffs if you win kickoff you've earned the boot you earn the side boost if you lose kickoffs you have to rotate back you have to go back to net because then your teammates in a 2v1 and you're in the corner getting boost and it's just Nah, 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 nah. Okay, so kickoffs is kind of an easy one to talk about. Now let's talk about defense. Rotation in defense is a little bit harder to explain because you have to... You've probably all heard the thing about boost management. You get collect pads, you go back, and then you uh, go to the back of the post and stuff like that, which is correct, which is 100% correct. But that being said, your teammate has to do something also. And what I'm talking about is someone always, always has to be applying pressure. 100% of the time, it doesn't mean you go flying into the ball. It means you're fake challenging. It means you're ghosting. It means you're uh, just kind of being a nuisance and making the opponent flail with the ball. Whether that being your teammate or whether it being with you. You want to make your team or the opponent lose possession of the ball in a stupid way. That's the whole point of you being on defense. Because if he flicks it into the corner, your teammate has a boom to boom it out of the way. You understand. And then if you're the uh, opponent rotating back, you want to get to back post, which I'm kind of argumentative about. 
because I, I think you should be back post, but I think you should be back post in the net just so it's easier to save everything. But that's just nitpicking. But basically, you want to be back post. That, that's the gist of it for rotations. And then pick up pads, which I'm not going to get into too many details because boost management's everywhere. So if you uh, want to see a video about boost management, tell me. I'll make one. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have nailed that into the ground. But So that was defense. And now let's talk about offense. Offense is a whole different beast. Offense is like offense is where the rule of the tennis thing comes into play which i was talking about earlier basically you want to give them the sector of space which uh so basically on uh offense you want to give your teammate uh as much space as humanly possible uh well not as humanly possible you don't want to go all the way back for boost you get what i mean you want to stay close for whatever play he can do and at the same time you want to uh, be ready for his pass or if he loses, you want to be able to quickly recover and uh, either fake challenge or uh, uh, ghost. Or even just flail at the ball, but I wouldn't recommend that if your teammate loses possession. Basically, you flail at the ball when you, you can see your teammate is full recovered. Which actually, that also reminds me of rotations. Uh, if you are that person who goes flying into the corner and then loses ball completely, your goal is to get back as fast as possible. You want to either try to intercept the ball or get out of the way so your teammate can intercept the ball and you can go back into net. That That's the only two plays and it's kind of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like, it's not Nick Bicky, but it's like situational. That's the word I was looking for. Why was that so hard? It's situational. So if you're, if the opponent's going for like a slow dribble, you intercept that. You intercept that all the time. If your teammate's taking it as fast as possible, it is your other, it, or sorry, if the enemy is taking it as fast as possible, it is your teammate's job to try to push it as soon as he possibly can, seeing that you have recovered slightly and are heading back to net if he gives the opponent too much time he's gonna destroy him he has to fake challenge or uh a ghost there's no other option so uh, just a quick recap on offense uh be ready for your teammates plays uh be kind of cross so if your teammates in the right corner like badminton be in the left sector and make sure it's so say he's here uh make sure you're a little bit behind him so you can either make it to net or you can rotate behind him yeah okay just quick recap the next one is you have to trust teammates and i feel like trust is a bad word it's more like you have to have faith in teammates because you really are praying <laughs> there's a lot of situations where i'm like oh my teammate if he's positioned correctly he can clear this completely he can he can like get a perfect play so i just ignore it and then my teammate is like doing something stupid in the corner and you're like damn it well i could have intercepted it but i have to have faith that he's good you you can't always put yourself in the play. I have a clip right here that shows I have a clear shot into the net. But because my teammate didn't have faith because he panicked, it went into possession of the opponents. When when I could have had an easy goal. And we actually ended up losing that game because of that one call. And we went to overtime, which we wouldn't have gone to overtime. It, it's just you have to have faith, but you also have to realize what your teammate is capable of and what he's not capable of. If it looks awkward for him, help him. Kind of, you want to be supportive in the back or ready for a save. You never want to double commit with him. Or if you do, make sure he like can't recover at all. Make sure, you have to you have to distinguish the two. Like he whiffs completely, then you're like, okay, I need to take over. That that's pretty much it. Which I mean, I kind of touched on my next point, which is right here, which is never double commit. Never, especially, 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 in your opponent's corners. If you double commit in twos in your opponent's corners, you're like, here, have a free goal. Here, I bless you with this free goal. That That's what that means if you double commit. Even if you win the challenge and you keep it in the corner, because that's the best outcome you can do, because it's really rare to score it unless you're Jazer in the corner doing those crazy corner pitches. It's like, it's not possible to actually get a good outcome. You can get a satisfactory outcome if you double commit in the corner. You can never get a good outcome. You have to take your time, let them gain a little bit of ground, and then attack them in midfield when your teammate is somewhat recovered or not recovered at all. Basically, you want to put pressure on them 
or he can keep pressure, you get it. Never double commit, ever. In threes, in twos, in ones, never double commit. And now to my final point is this is all just strategy, right? This, there's no correct way and there's no wrong way because the only outcome is a win or a loss in the game, right? So if you think that you can do something better or if you say your kickoffs, you go for corner and you have like a godly faith in your teammate and he passes it right to where you would have been, like there's no way to prove which way is effective. This is just the best strategy to uh, make sure that you don't get scored on in defense, but it kind of takes away from uh, takes away from offense, right? That's why threes and twos are so different. That's why in twos you always want to be defending because if your teammate messes up, you can get back quickly. But in three, I'll get into it with threes. But basically, the gist of it is there's no correct answers. There, the better player is usually the monkey, right? Like, you can't predict it, but he his game over time, or his skill over time of playing the game shines, right? The, the gist of it is there's no correct answer. So basically, you kind of figure it out as you go. These are just stepping stones to help you improve. And uh, with that, I think I'm done. Uh, if you guys want to see another video on threes, uh, let me know. I'm going to start doing ones soon. I'll probably make a couple of content about that. But I'm ranting and subscribe and bye